Then came I went into the service and when I came out Horace Hyde, I don't know if you ever heard of him was running his program of champions and all that stuff television and so my friend Bill told me says you ought to try for that Jim you should try for it. You'll make it. Thousands. You know. But he talked me in and go down there and try. Well, I did, and Mr. Hyde said, you're on. I sang with his orchestra, and he said, you're, you're on. You're, you're in my show. And so I went on and became one of his champions. And that's when the mother of Cornell Wilde, uh, she had seen me on television and she talked to MGM, to the department of MGM of singers or what have you, you know. And because she knew them all because of her son. So she arranged for me to have a screen test and to be interviewed by them and what have you. That's when they were having trouble with Barry Alonzo and they were looking for a replacement. Because then I had more of an operatic voice. But then when they told me what all I would have to do and how I would have to be in order to be a movie star, I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. No way. Well, going into the lot and whatever, I met Judy Garland, I met Lana Turner, I met Gregory Peck, I met Peter Ford, these different stars. And believe me, in person, they were everything you saw on the screen, even handsomer, even more beautiful in person than on the screen. And Gregory Peck was very handsome. Now, he didn't look nothing like he looks on the screen. And Peter Lawford, too, and, and Lana Turner was very beautiful. I mean, she was everything that... Uh, and Judy Garland was more of a live wire. And... Uh, but I still... No, no way, no way. And she kept trying... Cornel Wilde's mother kept trying to get me to, to... That this is what you had to to become a star. You had... This is the way it was. You signed a contract. And they would tell you who you went with and what you did and what you wore and all this. This was part of it. But I didn't know that was part of it. So I said, no, no, thank you. I don't want it. And later, because I used to go visit my grandmother in San Jacinto. And I went to work at Gilman Hot Springs Health Resort there. I didn't want to be with my mother. I didn't want to be, I wanted to go on my own. And um, Bill got a job there, so I got a job there, too. And he was bisexual. I didn't know this. He met a girl there that whose parents, she lived there. And they got married. And I thought to myself, what is this? How can this be? And they had four boys. And he was still gay as a chicken. I couldn't figure out how can this be? How can he be like two different people? So anyway, that's when Calvin Rowan and, uh, and um, um, Sylvia and her parents and what have you, and this group, little group, and uh, they having this little meeting on UFOs and everything. I don't know what the fuck UFOs were. I hadn't even heard of them, you know. I, the life I was living, you didn't hear about UFOs and about anything mystical or uh, I, I wasn't interested in anything like that anyway. Even if I'd have heard about them, I wouldn't have been interested. And so I attended their little meeting and uh, something to do there in San Jacinto. I wasn't going out dating or anything, so I mean, you know, you just fit wherever you could. And that's when I got the first message from them, from the Azarians. I didn't know who the hell they were. I didn't know what was coming down. I hadn't had any other experiences in Jesus, you see. That's a long time. I'd forgotten all about the other, about having seen him. And then they told, I told them, you know, because I was writing it down. And they told me to write it down. But they were telling me. They would repeat so I could write it down. 
and they they could tell that I was listening to something. They could tell by looking at you, you were listening to something. And then they asked me, and I told them. I said, um, I don't know who they, who, what, you know, I mean, but they say that they're the, um, the ones coming to visit and everything like that with the spaceships and all this stuff, you know, I said, and I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. And that's what they said when I read them the message. They said, they're in contact with you. They contacted you. And I thought, who? Okay, all right, you know, like, okay, so they're talking to me, all right, you know, I was just being nice, I was just being, uh, and then they started telling me about Van Tassel's UFO convention and all this stuff over there in Lander, the, in the desert and whatnot, and, and the Van Tassel should hear my story, Van Tassel, I should talk to him, he'd like to be, you know. And I thought, oh God. And there was going to be all these others there that had also been contacted and what have you. And all. I thought, well, it sounds like fun. It sounds interesting. I was going with Estelle and her mother and father, and Calvin would be there too and what have you. And uh, it would be an outing out in the, you know, you know what I mean, an outing, uh, something to do. Because there wasn't much to do in San Jacinto. And um, San Jacinto was this big. And so we got down there to the thing, you know, set up and all that. And uh, all these people with their little tables and all these little books and everything. And they introduced me to the bathroom and they introduced me to Van Tass and told him, you know, and they introduced me to that, that, that. And I heard all this crap. And I, I, I didn't believe any of it. I said, this is a bunch of bullshit, you know. I mean, these people didn't contact nobody. I could tell by the way it didn't make sense. But I was nice. I was, uh, introduced to George and Smith. then there was, yet, yeah, no, no, not yet, okay. and uh, there was this little old lady, elderly lady there, her name, I can't remember what her name was, but anyway, her and Bethlehem were good friends, and he introduced me to her, and she did ghostwriting, and she said that she would like to write my story, if I wanted to, now it wasn't for free. You get 10% or something of a book of it done. That's how she made it in the writing work of these people. That's why she attended these stuff. Uh, and I told her, I said, well, no, no, thank you very much. I said, because um, uh, that's all I got. I don't know anything more. And Van Tassel wanted me to go up there and talk on the Indian part. Because that used to be the rock of the Indians and all this and that and and uh, they told him that I was one of the local Indians and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, that was all right, see. That, that was okay to go and talk about. But then they contacted me again. And they said that if I would go up on the platform and read the message that I had received from them to the people, you know, the mics and all this and that, that they would bring a shipping and everyone would see it. So, so I tell them that they were going to bring one in to show the people that I was for real, that I was really in contact with them. The only one who had his, his brought a ship in. And I thought to myself, to hell with you. Oh, no, you don't. No, 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 no. My puss on front of the goddamn Los Angeles Times and every other goddamn newspaper. And there goes my privacy. There goes uh, the no way, no way, and then they dig into your past and all this and that. No, no, uh, 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 no, 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 no. They'll never accept me. And so I started to walk off the platform, and Van Tassel couldn't understand why. What's wrong? I said, No, I changed my mind. I, I really not. I don't want to talk. Anymore. And I started to walk away with Sylvia, and her mother was waiting for it. That's the cell standing by the side. The women standing there. That's the cell. Her mother with a couple of other ladies. And we were, Sylvia and I were walking away, as you see in the photograph. I didn't know that they had still brought the ship in and they were right be above, behind me, right above me, right behind me. They were coming door. I didn't know, I, I didn't, nobody said, look, look, you know, or anything like that. I didn't, I just had, I was just trying to get away. We're going to go have lunch. Just get away, you know, get away. And the next thing I knew, I was inside their ship. 
with just a little bathing suit and a little fucking straw hat. There I am, half naked. And good God, when I saw them, what they looked like. I'd heard all these weirdo beans and everything and all this stuff, you know, and these weren't anything but like that. And the crab <laughs> was all from modern. I mean, there were no little fans in the corner to keep it cool or air and all this shit. And they didn't say they came from Venus or Mars or anything like that. And I kept saying to them, but I'm watching my step too, take me, I want to go back. You have kidnapped me. I, no thank you. You know, I mean, I want to go back. And they said that they had stuff they wanted me to tell the people on the planet you call Earth. I'll never forget that. The planet you call Earth. And of course I kept looking around inside the ship, you know. And um, and I'd look at them, the way, you know, the rope that they had that was made of energy. Looking at them and still wanting to, to leave. And John says, I'd have given my eye to for that experience. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you can give them all your teeth if you want, I said, but... And so anyway, during all the time they were talking to me and showing me what they did and everything, and I had already told them, like I told you, that if all I had to do was spit across the street to save mankind, I would swallow the saliva. That I didn't give a damn about them as far as I was concerned. I didn't care what happened to mankind. You picked the wrong guy. And like I told them, why me? Why did you pick a professor or somebody at Jalik or something the people will accept? And that's what they said. We have scoured. I didn't even know what the hell the word scoured meant. We have scoured the surface of your planet. And there is no such animal. Well, I thought maybe they didn't look very good. So after they were through and everything, they brought me back. But as far as I was concerned, fuck you. You want to see me? You go to the bar and look for me. I, I'm not going to be sitting here worrying about being a, a, a worker with you for mankind and all that. I'm going to go live my life. I'm not I'm not interested in this. I'm going to damn who you are. Where did they bring you back to? There, John Rock. They dropped me out there. It's already nighttime. It's already getting dark. And um, so Sylvia... And her mother and all that, they didn't know exactly what happened. I mean, all they knew was that the ship was coming over here and night disappeared. Just, I was gone. Right in front of their eyes. And I told them what happened. You know. But that I wasn't interested. And uh, I couldn't wait to get home. And I went, no more of this. Oh, Van Tassel was just, oh my God, he wanted me to talk to the people. He wanted to do the story. And I said, no. No. And he tried to tell the people there's one amongst you. Those are his contacts. That what you saw what happened. And um, but Ackerman and everything I talked with Ackerman. And um, and like I said, he gave me the um, cause see when he had the camera thing when he photographed it, he saw me coming towards him, walking towards him. And then gone. Oh, Ackerman didn't. <laughs> All he could do was rub his eyes, you know. And uh, uh, when when the photo came out of the of the camera, like a dozen Polaroid, you know, there I was. So he knew that he had seen me. Well, that's when he became an absolute believer. So anyway, he gave me the, you know, because I have when you put the little stuff, you rub on them, you know, on top of the hood of the car. There, I helped him with that. And then he signed them and handed them. He said, these are yours. This is your thing. And um, so anyway, I, I still didn't want. But then Estelle, Big Bob, Estelle and Sylvia and Calvin, all of them, you know, and Matt Nassel too. Word got out. So people started contacting me. Will you please come and lecture? Will you please come and tell us? You're, you know. 
and and we will pay you, you know, we'll pay your way and everything. And I thought, oh, okay, all right, you know, I mean, what the hell, I don't know what the hell's going on, but uh, I, I did know, you know, but I didn't, uh, and they wanted to know what they looked like, what the crap looked like, and oh, good.